Hello, my name is Bart Brecka. Today I'm prepared to share a second part of a two-part video where we created in Wildfire 4 a simple aluminum part to CNC. Uh, this time I'm going to do the same a similar part in Creo 2.0 and compare kind of the user interface before I start. I just want to show off the Design Engine website. A handful of articles each month and a wide variety of jobs available. By the way, we're doing what we call the afterburn. It's an after work Creo user group meeting once a month. The last Tuesday of each month, the last full week that has a Tuesday in it. So the part I want to CNC is this part here. The first thing I need to do is to create a manufacturing model. Manufacturing. I'm just going to call it O3 for lack of a better word. Notice, notice what I'm building is, is an assembly. Scale the window to fit. First thing I need to do is, is just talk a little bit about the user interface in Creo and how kind of interesting they've they've thought to build the workflow in a direction. So first thing I need to do is build a reference model. You know, and it, everything I do is kind of in order. So let's do the reference model first, the model that I want to see and see. Right hold down, default constraint. Next thing I do is build a workpiece, whatever size aluminum block that I'm going to start out with. In this case, I'm just going to take that overall constraint as a default. So the next thing I need to do is create a work center. I'm just going to pull this out in here and just hit default. Notice it's building things in my model tree that are significant. Now I need to create a mill window. In this user interface, I've got a silhouette edge type. So I'm just going to kind of hover over here and grab the part and just hit OK. And you'll notice that my mill window created an outline curve there. Do you see that? The next thing I need to do is to define the option operation. Notice I don't have access to my cutting tools yet. So I'm going to define that as my Z direction up. Okay, and if, if you're observant, now I've got access to a mill window here. I'm just going to click in it to show you and and I have access to being able to modify my cutting tools as well. I'm going to go ahead and do the cutting tools but I'm going to do that through this mill window here. So I'm going to go ahead and define out a volume rough cut and uh, you can see it's not quite wildfire eyes yet can read into my tone of voice. So these options are going to be available for me to edit tool. That's why I didn't uh, define my, t my, my tool up here. So let's go ahead and see. Okay, so I've got a tool here. Notice how thick the tool is. I'll change it later. Apply and close. Uh, now it's asking for some specific parameters. I'm going to go ahead and make my step depth 0.01. So if you compare to Wildfire 4, this is a nice yellow. It's very easy to see what information it needs. Clear distance 2 inches and 330 for spindle speed. Now it's asking for my retract setup. I'm just going to go ahead and lift it up about that far. And it's asking now for that mill window silhouette edge. So I pick that. Now I've basically created my toolpath. I could play the path if I want here, or left click, right hold down on this volume milling, and it would 
uh, ask for my toolpath. So it did some calculations, it counted some numbers down at the bottom, and you'll notice how large my tool is. I can, I can play the tool, I can speed it up in real time. Okay, let's hit done sequence, and you can see now I've got a cut motion in my toolpath here. Let's go ahead and change some, some, some items. Let's change our cutting tool. I'm going to change that to 0.25. Confirm. OK. Now let's left click, right hold down, play my toolpath here. And as it does this recalculation again at the bottom, you'll see that it brings up a smaller tool. Okay, so a smaller tool. And I can, you know, certainly speed that up and slow it down. Let's now make a change to the model that I want to cut. This is interesting to me because I run into a lot of people that that will say they need to use a, another software, a, comp a competing software package because their tooling vendor uses that competing software package. Well, I can pretty much tell you that they're taking an IGES file and dealing with that dumb data that's an IGES file. And in Pro Engineer, I can I can make I can update the toolpath just like I update a part in an assembly. So I'm going to take and just make myself a quick cut here. Then I'll regenerate my, my assembly. Just make that a cut. Some approximate depth. Let's close out of that. And let's just regenerate this assembly now. And let's recalculate this cutting path. I'm going to go ahead and Left click, right hold down, play path. It's recalculating at the bottom because I regenerated. Basically, it's regenerating the toolpath just like a, a feature regenerates in a part or a part regenerates into an assembly. So you can see it just, it's just seeing, seeing what it sees there. All right, this is the end of my small comparison and basic introduction to ProNC. Consider coming to Design Engine in the near future. And uh, thanks for listening.